Grand Seiko, Grand Seiko, they're nothing quite like Grand Seiko. The brand and its watches, maybe they're not for you, they're certainly not for everyone, but Grand Seiko has its own style and that's something, that's something that's always been interesting to me. And one aspect of that style is that Grand Seiko watches feel like they're constantly evolving, constantly and quickly. I can't keep up with all the new references and the marketing terms and the innovations, but I did pay attention when this watch was announced earlier this year, 2022. This checks a few boxes for me, and so I was excited to go hands-on with it. And this is only possible because the owner of this watch foolishly let me borrow it, so thanks Troy for passing this to a stranger in a coffee shop in Portland. By the time this video goes up, you might have it back on your wrist. We'll see. This is the SBGE285, and it was announced at Watches and Wonders this spring. Grand Seiko also gave it the nickname Mistflake, which, man, I've got issues with Grand Seiko naming. Unlike most companies which give names to lines of watches like Seamaster Professional or Navitimer, Grand Seiko only gives nicknames to specific references, and not all watches have those names. So we're usually left saying things like the SBGM221, you know, the GMT. No, not that one, the mechanical one. No, not that one, the one with the pretty dial. I've got opinions. The Miss Flake gets its name from the fact that the dial on this watch is very similar to the one on the Grand Seiko Snowflake, and also Mist, somehow. I don't really know, maybe it's because of the light colors? Regardless of the naming, this is a very interesting watch. Its titanium, not steel, case is 41 millimeters across, 13.9 millimeters thick, and 48 millimeters long. It has 22 millimeter lug spacings, it's water resistant to 100 meters, and with a full bracelet it weighs only 118 grams. Again, titanium. The watch lists for $8,400, which shows Grand Seiko's upmarket move. This Mist Flake is part of Grand Seiko's new Evolution 9 collection. This is a new style of design that we've seen used in watches like the White Birch, which everyone seemed to lose their mind about. I reviewed the White Birch last year, it's nice. I have some issues with that watch, and I have some of the same issues with this watch. The Evolution 9 collection features watches like this, which adhere to 9 design principles. Now, some of those 9 principles are present in just about every Grand Seiko watch, but the principles that I think are specific to these watches are Number 3, a double wide index at 12 o'clock Number 5, a deep middle groove on the indices in Indexes? Indices? And number eight, a bracelet at least half the width of the case. I feel about these principles the same way I feel about high-intensity titanium and Zeratsu polishing. They're nice, but they're mostly marketing terms. Take Zeratsu. That's the term used to describe Grand Seiko's distortion-free, mirror-like polished surfaces, and they are beautiful. Grand Seiko really knows what it's doing with polishing, but is it better than any other polished component at this price? I'm not convinced. Spring drive though, spring drive is another marketing term used by Grand Seiko, but this one, this one is truly unique to the brand and it's pretty great. Spring drive is the name of the technology that makes this watch run. In the simplest dichotomy of watches today, there are mechanical movements which store energy in springs and release that energy via mechanical methods. And then there are quartz watches which store energy in batteries or capacitors and release the energy with the help of a quartz crystal. I know you know this, but maybe some people watching have healthy hobbies and don't have a Swiss lever escapement tattooed on their lower back, adjusted to five positions. The Grand Seiko spring drive movement kind of combines mechanical and quartz components. Like a fully mechanical movement, the spring drive stores energy in a spring, and like a quartz movement, the spring drive uses a quartz crystal to regulate timekeeping. But unlike most quartz movements, a spring drive movement releases energy continuously through an electromagnetic break. The result of this is a perfectly smooth seconds hand. No ticking, not even 10 times per second like a high beam mechanical movement. Ain't it purdy? And because a quartz crystal is used for timekeeping, spring drive movements are very accurate. Accurate to less than one second per day. This movement, the 9R66, has a 72 hour power reserve. That's three days and you probably notice that it's a GMT movement. And that's one of the reasons this watch excites me. I dig GMT watches. I travel a bit and I work with people all over the world. 
Cranseco GMT complications are done in the traveler style. That means that the local hour hand jumps and sets the date. This is how most higher end GMT movements operate. I like how the GMT hand has a different loom color to differentiate it from the local time. It's not necessary, but neither is this watch, or Grand Seiko, or this video, or me. With the titanium case and titanium bracelet, this watch feels feather light on my 7 inch wrist. Before I tried the watch on, I was concerned with the 13.8mm thickness, but I don't even notice the thickness. The watch is pretty comfortable, but it could be more comfortable, which brings me to the bracelet. Grand Seiko, bless your heart, but you gotta put micro adjustments on your bracelets. This does come with half links, but at this price there should be some way to size the watch by 2mm at a time. Even if it's with a paper clip like older Rolex watches. Something, why you gotta do me like this? Aesthetically the bracelet is... it's subtly weird to me. This is a 5 link bracelet, there are 5 parts to each link. Until recently, this always meant that the two smaller sections would be polished. Now with all of them brushed, uh, what's the point? Why not just make it a simple oyster style bracelet? And then there's the width. At 22mm, the Evolution 9 bracelets just look a bit too wide to me. I love the proportions of the case and everything under the crystal, but the bracelet seems inelegant. Thankfully, with the monochromatic dial, just about any strap will look good on this watch. That I appreciate. Honestly, the watch overall is quite a beauty. This is Grand Seiko doing what it does best. A textured dial, perfectly polished hands and markers, a case covered in interesting angles, and an innovative movement. I've got a lot of problems with you watches, but I'm tough on Grand Seiko because I really like what they do. It ain't like any other company and this ain't like any other watch. I've owned several Grand Seiko watches. Quartz, Mechanical, and Spring Drive, and spending time with this Mist Flake, this really makes me want another Grand Seiko watch, which, that's not how this is supposed to go. I borrow watches so I don't have to buy them, and now I've got another itch to scratch. So, thanks a lot, Troy.